This is the second video we've done about Starlink. The first one was about this. It's a uh, Generation 2 Starlink, the standard model. We've had it for over a year. It's been really good in general. It's had some problems as well, which we've sort of talked about in the episode. But I'm going to do a bit of a long-term test as part of this uh, video about the the good and the bad of this dish, uh, but also going to talk about this one. So this is the Starlink Mini, as you can see. It's much smaller than the uh, the standard version. It's lighter, it uh, uses half the power, which is the main thing about uh, having this on the boat. It's a really good plus point for it. Uh, but there are some negative things as well. So let's start off with uh, looking at the gear and a review of this one. So firstly then, the bad side of this, it is not really 12 volt. It's uh, advertised as being a 12 volt system. Yeah, it doesn't really work on 12 volt at all. It comes with this uh, long cable, which is great. Uh, you can uh, pretty much put it anywhere on the boat with this. But if you try and plug this in to 12 volt, and I've got a, an EcoFlow unit here that's got a 12 volt uh, output DC here, can supply three amps maximum, it says. That's not really enough, and the problem is, is that this cable, so long and so thin, um, has a big voltage drop across it. When I first plugged it in, it wouldn't even fire up. I thought I had a duff unit, uh, and then after you know, messing about for 10 minutes, I picked this up and I felt it was warm. So obviously there was a, a big power loss in this, and would have been a big voltage drop, and not enough to even kick this in, into life. So I did happen to have a shorter cable. So uh, I pulled that out and plugged it in with that and it came to life. But it was just very, very unreliable um, with this. We went straight onto a Zoom call that we had uh, with one of our patrons and, uh, and it just kept dropping out every five minutes. Uh, I thought it was an, maybe an alignment problem because I was just trying it on different places on the boat and in some places there were things in the way and I didn't know how sensitive it was. Um, it wasn't that at all. It ended up, no matter where we put it, it would last a few minutes and then drop out. Um, and that's just because it was just low voltage on, on this. So what you need to do um, is either have something that's a, a higher uh, voltage DC, so you could use a DC to DC converter if you're on 12 volt boat to, to, uh, to ramp that up a little bit, um, or if you're on a 24 volt boat, I'm sure that's fine. Um, or you can use the, uh, the supplied plug. You, I mean, this is a, a British one because we bought this in the UK, but it's, you know, it'll have uh, a little inbuilt transformer block type plug. And this is spitting out 30 volts. So that's obviously what this wants natively. It wants you know, something like for 30 volts, as I say, I'm sure it'd be okay on, on 24. Um, but yes, with this, as soon as I plugged it in this way, because uh, this just plugs straight in the back, you can see these plug ends are actually really nice. They've got uh, good waterproofing on them. So the other one goes obviously in the back of here. To get this out, you just squeeze slightly and it pulls out. Um, and then that can go in there and makes it very, very nice and neat and, and waterproof. Um, and with that, this plugged in, even with the long cable with 30 volts coming going up, it's absolutely fine. This, you know, there's not going to be so much of a, a voltage drop, and, uh, and and this works really well that way. So it is a bit of a shame uh, that a 12 volt boat, you're not really going to be run it, running it straight off your batteries. You're going to have to have some system uh, in the way to do that. Now, what I've got with the um, the old Starlink uh, is I didn't transfer that through to a DC. That's quite a faff to do. We fitted this Phoenix inverter from Victron, which is a nice, efficient, small inverter. We don't have the ship's inverter on that often, so it made sense to do it that way for generation two. So for this one, I could do the same thing and I could then use the long cable uh, and, and it would be absolutely fine because it's delivering 30 volts down it. I might at some stage uh, just get a transformer so it can stay DC all the way through. It'd be even more efficient. Uh, but at the moment, we'll do a test in a minute but I'll show you it's using about half the power of the uh, the older version the standard version so you know that's a really good plus point because these things are a little bit uh, um, inefficient when it comes to things like that compared with you know obviously just using a sim card which is using using nothing you've got to sort of think that yeah you're you're adding something to your boat that's going to use a significant amount of power over time really um, so the other things that comes with it you've got uh, this which is a sort of a pole mount uh, so it, you can have different things sort of made in there so you can you can fit it to different pole sizes I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to fit it at the moment at the moment I've been using just one of my little camera mount things here which screws into the back of there so I can just attach it to different pipes and things around the place. I'm, I'm sort of trying it out because one of the things that you need to do with this is um, it, it's not really supposed to be flat. It should be pointing slightly north um, and, and it 
does seem slightly sensitive to that. I mean, if you look at this video in the rain, this is one of the things I was worried about. Uh, this is something we had a massive downpour and even the, the other Starlink would suffer sometimes with, with massive rain. But you can see this one, although it says it's, it's slightly uh, uh, blocked its, its view, it still stayed up and, and working. We have had occasions uh, where we've been using it here when we've had, 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 had really heavy rain in, in Colombia where it has stopped. But I think actually even the standard one would have stopped under some of those circumstances as well so I'm actually quite impressed with that because I thought you know being half the size half the power it, it might have been a lot more sensitive to that um, as regards to where it's pointing sometimes we're swinging around at anchor here a lot north is that way uh, and I quite have it have often have it on this side of the boat and it just sits at a little bit of an angle looking out there now it might be because it's just set on the side getting a little bit of the, the bimini which has got a, a solar panel on top so maybe that's blocking it slightly but sometimes when the boat swings right round and this is pointing the wrong way it loses connection as well so um, i have to wait and see once i've got it in clear sky up there and if i just mount it completely flat whether that's going to be okay and it's going to you know stay with a good connection all the time i hope it will but yeah at the moment when you tilt it and then the boat swings round it it sometimes loses it so uh, yeah that's a sort of a downside compared to the other one the other one you can see we have got flat i drilled that to uh, to to get rid of the motors you don't need to do that anymore because it's in the uh, the app that you can set it to just go go flat if you've got one of the old ones that's that's what you can do and that's that's the best thing to do uh, if you if you're on a boat so why do we bother to buy one of these when we've already got a, a starlink well there's a couple of reasons one is that uh, you know it does use half the power so actually it's worth the money just to to, to save that if it's if it's going to be as good and it seems like it, it is so I'm quite glad uh, that we've got it for that reason but the other reason was that actually our Starlink was cut off we went, you've now got this this system that if you're away from the the country you registered in for more than 60 days they can cut you off and they did cut us off we were in Aruba at the time and they, and they cut us off completely without any warning um, and I couldn't re-register that because you have to wait 90 days to, to re-register it um, so I thought well, if that's going to be the case, maybe having two anyway would be good because you can flip flop between one and another. They cut one off, go to the other one. By the time that goes through and that one gets cut off, it's, it's liable to be quite a few months ahead and you can then re-register the, uh, the first one. So that's sort of the way I was thinking of, of doing this as part of the, uh, the, the plan for trying to stay on the Rome contract because you could get around this by going to one of the, the much more expensive marine maritime type uh, contracts. Um, and people have sort of said, well, you know, why not just do that? Just pay the money and do it. Well. Uh, that would be fine if uh, if it if it made sense if there wasn't an alternative i mean it's all very well you know, elon saying oh well you know it's expensive putting rockets up there which obviously it is uh, and this is a great thing he's supplying but it's got to be it's got to make sense in, in a business sense uh, for for the customers that, that are taking it and for us you've got to think of the fact that if we go to a, a sim card as we did in aruba when they cut that off the sim card was was costing me about 70 dollars a month rather than 160 dollars a month that i was paying for that so it was half the price it was just as good service in fact it was better in aruba you've got service all the way around it so if that was where you, you you're sailing um, then it, it would make no sense to go to uh, to starling because every anchorage there has got you know really good uh, coverage it's not going to have the problem of it, if it when it pours with rain that it cutting down and it also has the advantage if you're on a sim card is that you've got it in whatever device your phone that you're using to, to hotspot and when you go ashore you've still got it obviously you've got to think of that if you've got starlink on your boat and that's the only connection that you've got um, then as soon as you go ashore you you don't have that anymore um, I mean having said that when we did get our sim card you do have to go through that rigmarole of, of finding one finding a shop we had to walk a long way find a shop stay in line it took half a day basically to get it so Starlink's fantastic for that in that you know you can just arrive somewhere and, and it's already working you don't have to faff around and do all those things and obviously in some places you can't get good you know um, cheap unlimited services as well so it sort of depends on, on where you are I mean if we were still back in the Mediterranean I mean I think I can count on the the fingers of one hand uh, the times where we were in places where there was no service a few places in Turkey uh, on, the, on the sim 
same car there were no service so in those con conditions you know those places it might be good to, to have Starlink but other places you can get by pretty well on, uh, on on a sim card so it doesn't make any sense to say you know if this is going to be five times ten times the price that it's still worth it it, it just wouldn't be so uh, yeah you've got to work out what it's worth for you the other thing is obviously we use a lot of data so we want the unlimited uh, uh, version of, of this if you start having to pay for data then that's going to be you know rack up lots of expense as well now the Rome does give you unlimited so that's really really good we are paying here when when I registered this we were in Aruba uh, Aruba doesn't sell Starlink so you can't register it there and it came up automatically that it wanted to to register in in Colombia which was okay because that's where we were going we've, we've come here now uh, so I, I went for that option I don't think anymore you've got the option to to pick what country you want to go to it, it didn't seem to allow me to do that I tried uh, to do it in the Bahamas for instance and it, it just kept saying pay in pesos Colombian pesos that's where it wanted us to be um, so for us the good thing about this is that it is cheap there I mean we are paying at the moment um, 343,000 Colombian pesos sounds like a lot but it's actually 61 pounds 77 dollars so half the price of if I'd registered in in the US so that's really good so the system I've got now is that this was it, it was working in Aruba because it is allowed to work there registered in Colombia we are now in Colombia so it's, it's just ticking away time as soon as we leave Colombia we're then on two months before they cut us off I don't know if if that's going to be completely precise that they exactly on two month they, they seem to cut people off at all sorts of different times in the anchorages that we've been in before uh, so I think it's just as and when they find out they cut you off so maybe two months or so after le leaving uh, uh, Colombia we might get cut off by that time we might be in the Grand Caymans or the Bahamas somewhere like that and at that stage if they do cut us off I'll re-register the other Starlink and I'll, uh, I'll start using that one again it registered in the Palmas or wherever we are at that time so that's sort of how it's going to work uh, the other way around that uh, the global roam which would would allow you to, to keep it going uh, is not too bad it's 331 pounds um, that's what it works out as uh, registered in Panama as we are I don't know if that's going to be more if you're registered in uh, in Europe or, or in the US um, so yeah I mean, it's, it's, it's up to you whether that's that's worth it it's still quite a lot I think most people in those circumstances if it's 331 pounds per month might think well, it's, I'm better off with sim cards but but yeah um, at the moment also we've still got the the Rome the toggle uh, to go to uh, priority on Rome uh, which is good so if we can go offshore uh, which we will do now we'll be going to the San Blas I can toggle that and I'm paying uh, £1.80 per gigabyte uh, for, for that up to 50 gigabytes so it's still good for, for offshore we can you know we can use those those sorts of things to, to a limit so it's good for, for weather and all those other bits and pieces and then I'm hoping when we get to Panama um, the, the, the San Blas Islands in Panama that that, that will be still included because you're close enough to land we'll find out when we get there I will put updates in the description to all this so uh, do have a look at that if you're looking Looking at this video uh, a few weeks or months after it's put out have a look at the description and I'll, I'll update how things are working as they go but yes on the face of it I think this was a uh, it's, it's going to be a very good buy it seems seems to be really good as I say easy to fit in that the the um, the router is actually built into it one of the things I want to test we we'll do a little test for that as well is to have a look at if I put this on the back arch right back there that I'm still gonna the, the router might is going to be power enough powerful enough for me to uh, to use it in the salon still uh, I'm not sure if it will be um, you could get around that by plugging in uh, the back here uh, an Ethernet cable and feeding the Ethernet cable uh, to, a, to a, a router inside the boat which would be a good way of doing it you could even power it that way with power over Ethernet as well I'm not sure how well that works going by how flaky it is on the on the 12 volt probably doesn't work that well I would guess um, but yes that would be a way if uh, if the the inbuilt router for this thing isn't good enough to cover your whole boat you, you might have to do that but uh, yeah let's do a little bit of testing and uh, see how see what the figures look like
So we've got the Starlink set up. Uh, it's powered by the uh, EcoFlow. Got it pointed in roughly the right direction, I think, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. But first of all, let's have a look at how much power it's drawing. I'll put this up on screen. This is the EcoFlow app. So it's showing 35 watts. It just went from 31 to 35. It was on 50 when you first plug it in. It sort of uh, does that for a little while until it's, it's found its satellites and does what it needs to do. And then it tends to settle normally around 30. It's a little bit higher at the moment, 38, 32. But yeah, it normally settles at around 30 watts, which is about half of what uh, you would have from the, uh, the, the full version, the, the standard version. So yeah, that's pretty good. It is pretty much half of what, uh, what the other one is. Uh, let's have a look at the, uh, the iPad, which has got the uh, Starlink app on it. You can see we are online. Uh, one of the first things you can do, alignment, if I go for that, it says the Starlink tilt is incorrect. So yeah, it's, uh, it's probably tilted a little bit too much i'll probably bring it up a little bit uh, but we are swinging at anchor so it's never going to be it's never going to be per perfect so it's now saying turn starlink to match the target so it wants to be swiveled so you can spend ages doing this but as i say we are we are moving around on anchor so it is what it is you can't really get that perfect uh, when you're on here but it, it doesn't seem to make too much of a difference so yeah, as long as it's in the ballpark uh, you're okay uh, the one thing you do want to do the obstructions thing here if you press that you can see we've got some obstructions and that's probably just that it's getting the edge i don't know from there how wide it is the edge of the bimini uh, and it's got the solar panel on there those sorts of things are probably uh, affecting it as well so once we've got it on the back arch here it, that that might be uh, a little bit better uh, and the other thing uh, let's just do a speed test we'll do its own speed test on here i normally do the, the third party ones as well because these ones normally uh, the styling one normally says a little bit more than uh, the other ones that you plug in um, and it, i don't think it's, it's not as fast it's noticeable when we're uploading our our episodes they will take three or four hours where quite often with the other one they would it would do it in half an hour or so so you know that that is a difference the upload speed especially seems to be a little bit lower but it's certainly enough for streaming netflix and doing all those sorts of the, uh, sorts of things uh, unless it's pouring with rain or you've got some other problem where you've swung massively around and it's in the wrong direction that's the only time you've had it sort of dropping off so yeah that's that's not too bad the other thing i wanted to test is the uh is the the wi-fi uh router in this and how that works so let's do a little bit of a test with that and see what it's like uh, if i'm inside and if it still gets a good signal so go to network and then check wi-fi range and walk around and as you do, there'll be green, yellow or red hexagons, depending on how good the signal is. We've got green in the saloon, which is great. This is where we usually use the computers. And even in the forehead cabin, it's really good as well. Well, I'm surprised by that, I must uh, admit. I mean, not that it's been dropping out. It hasn't been. It's been working around OK all over the boat. But to be green all over the boat like that is, is really good. It's obviously quite a powerful uh, router that's inbuilt into the uh, antenna itself. It seems to be better than the, uh, the one in the old unit, actually, which is uh, the separate one that's, that's inside the boat, because that, that was going red in some places and did drop out in places. So yeah, uh, all in all then, I think uh, the Mini is a, a really good buy. Uh, hope that uh, things don't change too much with Starlink, because that's been its, its one Achilles heel at the moment with the ever-changing uh, contracts and uh, terms of use. I uh, hope that all settles down and uh, we can get some good use of it out of it on the boat. So please do like and subscribe uh, and all those good things and, and leave, leave a comment and have a look at the, uh, the description for, for any updates uh, as things go on.